Ram Mohan Roy. Ram Mohan Roy, Ram Mohan also spelled Ram Mohan, Ram Mohan, or Ram Mohan, was an Indian religious, social, and educational reformer, and humanitarian, who challenged traditional Hindu culture and indicated the lines of progress for Indian society under British rule. He is called the maker of modern India, and also the father of modern India. He is also regarded as the father of the Bengal Renaissance. He, along with Dwarkanath Tagore and other prominent Bengalis of the early 19th century, founded the Brahmo Sabha in 1828, which engendered the Brahmo Samaj, an influential Indian socio-religious reform movement during the Bengal Renaissance. His influence was apparent in the fields of politics, public administration, and education, as well as religion. He was described by Rabindranath Tagore as the father of Indian Renaissance, and the prophet of Indian nationalism. Biography Early Life and Education 1772-1792 Roy's Aurasai's birth date is uncertain he was born in Radhanagar, Kuali, Bengal and his family were of the Rari Brahmin caste. His great-grandfather Krishna Chandra Banerjee acquired the title Roy, a variant of Ri. His family background displayed unusual religious diversity. His father Ramkanta Roy was a Vaishnavite, while his mother Tarina Devi was from a Shaivite family. This was unusual, as Vaishnavites did not commonly marry Shaivites at that time. Thus, one parent dedicated to the Lorkic, which was secular public administration. He wandered around the Himalayas and went to Tibet. Early political and religious career 1792-1820 Raja Ramo and Roy's impact on modern Indian history concerned a revival of the ethics principles of the Vedanta school of philosophy as found in the Upanishads. He preached about the unity of God, made early translations of Vedic scriptures into English, co-founded the Calcutta Unitarian Society, founded the Brahmo Samaj, and campaigned against Sati. He sought to integrate Western culture with features of his own country's traditions. He established schools to modernize a system of education in India. During these overlapping periods, Ram Mohan Roy acted as a political agitator and agent while being employed by the East India Company and simultaneously pursuing his vocation as a pundit. In 1792, the British Baptist shoemaker William Carey published his missionary tract An Inquiry into the Obligations of Christians to Use Means for the Conversion of the Heathens. In the following year, William Carey landed in India to settle. His objective was to translate, publish and distribute the Bible in Indian languages and propagate Christianity among the Indian peoples. He believed the mobile, that is service classes, Brahmins and Pundits were most able to help him in this endeavor, and he began gathering them. He learned the Buddhist and Jain religious works as a means of improving his arguments for promoting Christianity in a cultural context. In 1795, Carey made contact with a Sanskrit scholar, the Tantric Harayarananda Vijaya Bajish, who later introduced him to Ram Mohan Roy. Roy wished to learn English. In 1799, Carey was joined by missionary Joshua Marshman and the printer William Ward at the Danish settlement of Sarampur. From 1803 to 1815, Ram Mohan served in the East India Company's writing service, commencing as private clerk Munchie to Thomas Woodford, registrar of the appellate court at Murshidabad, whose distant nephew, also a magistrate, later made a living off the spurious Mahanavana Tantra under the pseudonym Arthur Avalon. In 1815, Raja Ram Mohan Roy formed Atmir Saban, and spent many years at Rangpur and elsewhere with Digby, where he renewed his contacts with Harayarananda. William Carey had, by this time, settled at Sarampur and the trio renewed their association with one another. William Carey was also aligned with the English Company, then headquartered at Fort William, and his religious and political ambitions were increasingly intertwined. The East India Company was taking money from India at a rate of £3 million a year in 1838. Ram Mohan Roy estimated how much money was being driven out of India and where it was headed. He predicted that around half of the total revenue collected in India was sent out to England, leaving India to pay taxes with the remaining money. 
Middle Period 1820-1830. Commenting on his published works, Sivanath Sastri wrote that Roy was part of a second appeal to the Christian public. Brahmanical Magazine Parts I, 2 and 3, with Bengali translation and a new Bengali newspaper called Sambad Kalmudi, was processed in 1821. In 1822, a Persian paper called Mirat al Akbar contained a tract entitled Brief Remarks on Ancient Female Rights. A book in Bengali called Answers to Four Questions was released the same year. The third and final appeal to the Christian public took place in 1823. Roy wrote a letter to Reverend H. Ware on the prospects of Christianity in India, and an appeal for famine smitten natives in southern India in 1824. A Bengali tract on the qualifications of a God loving householder, a tract in Bengali on a controversy with a Kyastha, and a grammar of the Bengali language in English were written in 1826. A Sanskrit tract on divine worship by Garitri with an English translation, the addition of a Sanskrit treatise against caste, and the previously noticed tract called Answer of a Hindu to the Question were released in 1827. A form of divine worship and a collection of hymns were composed by Roy and his friends in 1828. In 1829, Religious Instructions founded on sacred authorities was published in English and Sanskrit. A Bengali tract called Anuzdan was also published that year. A petition against Sati also took place in 1829. In 1830, Roy was in charge of a Bengali tract, a Bengali book concerning the Bengali language, the trust deed of the Brahmo Samaj, an address to Lord William Binton congratulating him for the abolition of Sati, a document in English of the arguments regarding the burning of widows and a tract in English on the disposal of ancestral property by Hindus. One of the controversial issues that embittered the Bengali community was his stand on European settlement. He and his followers joined the European mercantile community to push for abolition of restrictions on land holdings by the Europeans in the Mufasal, a stance which was opposed by the East India Company itself in addition to a large section of the Bengali community. This proposal was eventually rejected. Life in England and Death 1830-1833 In 1830, Ram and Roy travelled to England from the Kajuri port, then the seaport of Bengal, which is currently located in East Midnapur, West Bengal. He was the first educated Indian to sail to England. At the time, Roy was an ambassador of the Mughal Emperor Akbar II, who conferred on him the title of Raja to lobby the British government for the welfare of India and to ensure that the Lord Bentick's regulation banning the practice of sati was not overturned. Roy also visited France. Roy died in Britain at Stapleton, Bristol, on September 27, 1833. The cause of his death was meningitis. He was cremated in Arno's Vale Cemetery in southern Bristol. At the annual commemoration for Raja Ramohan Roy on September 22, 2013 at Arno's Vale Cemetery, Bristol, England, a previously unknown but magnificent miniature ivory portrait bust of Roy by the famous English 19th century ivory carver, Benjamin Sheraton, 1796-1876, was unveiled. The commemoration marked the anniversary of the death of Ramohan Roy, in Bristol in September 1833. This exceptionally rare and extremely important ivory bust is raised on a Rousseau Antico type marble plinth. The ivory, including turned socal, is 11 cm, 4 and 21 64 inches, high, 18 cm, 7 and 3 32 inches, high overall, including marble plinth. The best and most accurate three dimensional likeness of Ramohan Roy in existence. This ivory bust was made by the famous 19th century ivory carver Benjamin Sheraton in London in 1832. It is based on a bust of Ramohan Roy modelled from the life in London by the eminent sculptor George Clark in 1832 and carved in marble by him in 1833. Clark is the only sculptor to whom Ramohan Roy gave sittings. By use of his famous sculpture reducing machine, and with the sculptor's agreement, Sheraton translated the exact features of Clark's bust to this reduced size ivory replica. Clark's bust of Ramohan Roy is unlocated, presumed lost, but a damaged plaster cast of it survives in India. Personal Ram Mohan Roy was married two times before his teens. 
His third wife, Devi Uma, outlived him. Religious Reforms The religious reforms of Roy contained beliefs of the Brahmo Samaj as expounded by Rajarayan Basuwa. Brahmos believe that the fundamental doctrines of Brahmoism are at the basis of every religion followed by man. Brahmos believe in the existence of one supreme God, and worship him alone. Brahmos believe that worship of him needs no fixed place or time. Social Reforms of Raja Ram Mohan Roy Roy demanded property inheritance rights for women and, in 1828, set up the Brahmo Sabha, which was a movement of reformist Bengalis formed to fight against social evils. Roy's political background influenced his social and religious approach to reforms of Hinduism. He wrote, The present system of Hindus is not well calculated to promote their political interests, it is necessary that some change should take place in their religion, at least for the sake of their political advantage and social comfort. Ramo and Roy's experience working with the British government taught him that Hindu traditions were often not respected or considered to be credible by Western standards. This affected his religious reforms. He wanted to legitimize Hindu traditions to his European acquaintances by proving that the superstitious practices which deform the Hindu religion have nothing to do with the pure spirit of its dictates. The superstitious practices to which Ramo and Roy objected included sati, caste rigidity, polygamy and child marriages. These practices were often the reasons British officials claimed moral superiority over the Indian nation. Ram and Roy's ideas of religion sought to create a fair and just society by implementing humanitarian practices similar to Christian ideals and thus legitimize Hinduism in the modern world. Ram Mohan is remembered bringing about for women reform laws, especially law banning sati practice. He was stirred by loss of his sister-in-law, who became sati. When in 1818, some Hindus objected to guideline restricting sati, Ram Mohan Roy, produced a counter-petition requesting government to pass a law banning sati practice. He was at loggerhead with Raja Radha Kanta Deb, who was against government interference in religious practice. Roy risked his personal life and started a campaign against sati practice, in which he was later supported by Debendra Neth Tagore. He appealed to William Bentick to pass a law banning sati practice in British India and his persuasion bore fruit and practice was banned by a law passed in 1829 in Bengal Presidency, which was later extended in 1830 to Madras and Bombay Presidency. Educationist Roy believed education to be a means of creating social reform and was advocate of introduction of English schools in India. In 1817, in collaboration with David Hare, he set up the Hindu College at Calcutta. In 1822, Roy founded the Anglo-Hindu School, followed four years later by the Vedanta College, where he insisted that his teachings of monotheistic doctrines be incorporated with modern, Western curriculum. Vedanta College offered courses as a synthesis of Western and Indian learning. In 1830, he helped Alexander Duff in establishing the General Assembly's institution, by providing him the venue vacated by Brahma Sabha and getting the first batch of students. Roy supported the incorporation of Western learning into Indian education. He advocated the study of English, science, Western medicine and technology. He spent his money on a college to promote these studies. Journalist Roy was an ardent supporter of freedom and speech and press. Roy published magazines in English, Hindi, Persian, and Bengali to spread modern knowledge and politically educate the readers. He published the Brahmanical magazine in English in 1821. Another notable magazine of his was the Sambad Kalmadi, also published in 1821. In 1822, Ram Mohan published Myrat al Akbar in the Persian language. Brahmanical magazine ceased to exist after publication of a few issues. But Sambad Kalmadi, a news weekly, covered the topics such as freedom of the press, the induction of Indians into high ranks of service and separation of the executive and judiciary. Sambad Kalmadi became bi-weekly in January 1830 and continued to be published for 33 years. He published a newspaper to register his protest against the introduction of press ordinance of 1823. 
The ordinance stated that a license from the Governor General and Council would be required to publish any newspaper. When the English company censored the press, Ramoan composed two memorials against this in 1829 and 1830 respectively. As an activist, he steadily opposed social issues like sati and child marriage. Memorials A museum devoted to the life and times of Raja Ram Mohan Roy stands on Raja Ram Mohan Sarani, Amherst Street, Calcutta, India, in a mansion built by Raja Ram Mohan Roy. The museum is elaborate, very well documented, in English and Bengali, and well illuminated. The museum is on the west flank of Amherst Street, very close to the junction of Amherst and Sukhi Streets. A street in Kolkata is named after him as Raja Ram Mohan Roy Sarani in Kolkata. Another road after him is Raja Ram Mohan Roy Road at Bahala in Kolkata. A road after him is named as Raja Ram Mohan Roy Road in Delhi. A road after him is named as Raja Ram Mohan Roy Road in Bangalore. A road after him is named as Raja Ram Mohan Roy Road in Mumbai. A road after him is named as Raja Ram Mohan Roy Road in Vishalkhapeshnam. A road after him is named as Raja Ram Mohan Roy Road in Mumbai. There is a school named after him SKV Raja Ram Mohan Roy School and also an institute named Raja Ram Mohan Roy Institute of Vocational Studies in Delhi. Cenotaph The tomb was built by Dwarkanith Tagore in 1843. Ten years after Ramo and Roy's death in Bristol on September 27, 1833. It is located in the Arnos Bale Cemetery on the outskirts of Bristol. In 1845, Dwarkanith Tagore arranged for Ramon's remains to be returned to India through Roy's nephew, who had accompanied Dwarkanith for this purpose to Britain. Ramon's relics were cremated near Kolkata on February 28, 1846, by his family. In September 2006 representatives of the Indian High Commission and the Mayor of Kolkata came to Bristol to mark the anniversary of Ram Mohan Roy's death. During the ceremony Hindu, Muslim and Sikh women sang Sanskrit prayers of thanks. Following this visit the Mayor of Kolkata, by Kash Ranjan Bhattacharya, decided to raise funds to restore the cenotaph, and in June 2007 businessman Aditya Poda donated PS 50,000 towards the restoration. In June 2008 the Arnos Vale restorers confirmed that they could not locate Roy's remains at the site after searching for them by digging. The Bramosamarch.net stated, to everyone's surprise the coffin was not to be seen under the chartry. Further reading Ram Mohan Roy, The English Works of Raja Ram Roy, 1906, S.D. Collett, The Life and Letters of Raja Ram Roy, 1900. Ram Mohan Roy, A Present to the Believers in One God, circa 1803, Philip Medhurst, Ram Mohan Roy. Monotheist Philanthropist, 2012, ISBN 978-1479362654, David Wilson, A Portrait of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, A Masterpiece in Ivory, 2013. ISBN 978-0-9927224-1-8